You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz famous book of wisdoms, Al-Hikam al-Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit secretshub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزلنا علما بفضلك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين So we're reach number 13 in the Hikam of Shaykh Ibn Ta'idah. Um, and in it, he talks about yesterday, he talked about the uh, what you, what the servant puts forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then what is the uh, return or what the rewards or the fruits are. And should one be concerned or put more concern over or think more about and contemplate more about the fruits of one's actions or one's deeds over, uh, should one concentrate more on that over the fact, uh, over the concentration of the worship itself and perfecting it and, uh, and thinking about contemplating over the amount of effort that one is uh, applying uh, in order to uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. Should one uh, concentrate on the rewards rather than concentrate on the quality of the worship. So as he talks about, as he said yesterday, uh, that one should concentrate on what one is putting forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised, He will fulfill. But we have to be, we have to put ourselves and we have to put our worship in the proper way and in the most perfected of ways and the best of ways so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can fulfill the promise of the reward. The promise of the reward. And so we leave the reward because it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we concentrate on what is in our hands. What is in our hands? What is in our hands is to worship in the best of ways. What is in our hands is to gain sufficient knowledge in order to perfect the worship that we do. That's in our hands. And so he says in 113, he says, imdad <laughs> وَالشُّرُوكُ الْأَنْوَارِ عَلَى حَسَبِ السِّفَاءِ الْأَسْرَارِ or سَفَاءِ الْأَسْرَارِ uh, He said that the coming of divine help is in the measure of one's preparedness. That the coming of divine help, that the help uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to one, the help that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to one, that help that consistently comes to the servant is in measure of one's preparedness. Is one prepared to receive that divine help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the help. He brings help at every moment to the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings, uh, this is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings mercy to the servant at every moment. Is the servant, however, prepared for that, to, to receive that mercy? Is the servant ready to receive that mercy? Does the servant know, know what to do with that, uh, with the mercy uh, that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may send risk to the person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may send provision to the person. Is the person ready to receive it? Meaning, is the person ready to 
uh, to understand what to do with that provision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to them? Or is the person going to haphazardly uh, spend it or waste it? What is the person ready to do with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, brown, has brought to one? وَالشُّرُوكَ الْأَنْوَارِ عَلَىٰ حَسَّبِ الصَّفَاءِ الْأَسْرَارِ And he says, and the drawing of illuminations is of the purity of inmost soul. And is the measure of the, of the purity of the uh, of inmost, of the innermost soul. So, we talk about, we'll examine the first part, the coming of divine help is in the measure of the preparedness of the person of one's preparedness. Is one prepared to uh, take the divine help and to apply it to apply it in one's life and one's worship and one's relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to turn that help into closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or into more clarity with what one has to do or to better one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is one, is one prepared enough to, uh, is one prepared enough to take advantage of that help that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ha- is sending or that he has sent or that he is going to send? Is one prepared enough to take that divine help and to uh, take uh, full advantage of that help that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing, uh, is bringing to one. Because the divine help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come through in many different ways. The divine help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, is not specific to one particular thing or one particular avenue. The divine help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come through many different things. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may, the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be found in a understanding that one gets after reading the Quran or prayer or a moment of hudur, a moment of presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the salah. That could be the divine help that turns the Salah into something even greater than it is, or greater in your eyes than it is. And so the Wurud uh, al-Imdad, the bringing or the coming of divine help of, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in measure with the, uh, with the servant being prepared uh, to, uh, to receive it. And what, how is the servant prepared to receive it? To receive it by the uh, the purity of the heart. Is the heart pure, or is the heart, uh, or is the heart? Does the heart have uh, black dots in it? Does the heart have black dots in it uh, due to sin, due to sins, or due to slip ups? that the heart cannot recognize the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes. Mm-hmm. So prepare the servant preparedness of it is found in the purity of the heart. Is the heart purified in order to understand that this is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming. And so the purity of the heart then is in measured with what? with the limbs acting in accordance to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the limbs to act in accordance to. Are the limbs in complete, uh, are the limbs in complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are the limbs uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are the limbs leading you to destruction? Hmm? What is your hands doing does your hand stretch forth for goodness or does it stretch forth to, uh, for sinful things? What is the eyes doing? Is the eyes 
uh, lowering its gaze and diverting its gaze away from the haram is the tongue diverting away and remaining silent and not uh, speaking of ill or committing a sin is the ears not listening is the ears not listening to the haram so if one wants to look at the heart and the purity of the heart one looks at the limbs to determine whether that heart is uh, uh, is the heart in uh, beating in the uh, is the heart beating the beats of purity is the heart is the heart uh, pure enough that it recognizes the uh, the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so it, it depends on the uh, on the person and on the limbs and on the actions that the person has uh, that the person does, and the quality of the actions that the person does, the quality of the actions, the intention, and the sincerity of the of the action that comes off of the limbs, and so if the if there is more sincerity in the actions, then you'll find the heart becoming more pure. The heart will become more pure. And if the heart becomes more pure, then the heart is able to recognize the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in however way that it comes. In however way that the heart, in however way the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, then the heart will be able to recognize uh, the heart will be able to recognize it. The heart is able to recognize it. And the illumination uh, that comes, the illumination that comes, comes to the heart of an Arif, of a knower, of someone who knows, is in knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is in, know, is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That comes because of the, uh, that comes the uh, dawning of illumination comes over to one because of why it comes over to one because of the purity of Safa al Surar, the purity of the innermost souls. Mm. The purity of the innermost souls or secrets, the the dawning of more lights or illumination. Mm. That one and what is what does it mean? What do they mean by illumination? They mean by illumination that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of what to do in the time of doing it. So one does not miss a moment to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it equates to practically. The illumination of the heart equates practically in that one does not skip a moment in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it means practically. When one's heart is illumined with the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that one is not missing a moment to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One does not miss an opportunity to, uh, to feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One does not miss an opportunity to become even uh, to become even more in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One does not miss an opportunity to long even more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what the illumination uh, what illumination brings. Uh, that's what the illumination brings about. And so the uh, uh, the uh, uh, this hikmah can be summarized in in various ways, but it's its bath. It, it is in uh, it is summarized in doing what? It's summarized in the in the uh, in having a strong foothold in knowing uh, fully what one needs to do. Preparedness is knowing what one needs to do. What does one need to do? And how does one need to do the things that one has to do? How is one going to do it? And so there is a path that one goes along. And the path that one goes along is understanding 
what one needs to do, then seeking the correct knowledge in order to perfect what one needs to do. Seeking knowledge, correct knowledge, so that one can perfect what one needs to do outwardly. And then, as one is seeking the knowledge of what one needs to do to perfect the outward, is understanding what one needs to do for the inward. The niya, understanding how to bring about sincerity in the niya. And this is what we talked about yesterday. Understanding what needs to be due for sincerity of the niya. Hmm? That the actions that you do is for the sake of Allah. So it doesn't change whether you're in public or private. The actions are sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you combine the outward with the inward, that preparedness of the servant, that purity that it brings about in the heart, that itself becomes, the heart becomes prepared to receive and to understand and to know what to do with the help that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends. So that the moments that you have, the moments that you have are not missed. There's no, uh, there's no ghafla, there's no, uh, 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 there's no period of absent-mindedness uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no absent-mindedness that you forget mm, about going forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no state of being absent with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no state of ghafla. And so when you eliminate the state of ghafla or they become very few, the interval between the state of ghafla becomes longer. Those states become longer of complete forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They become longer, the interval. When they become longer, then the person is on that path in which he is ready or she is ready to understand what divine help is and to understand what to do with it. They can recognize it. They can recognize it. And when one, once one recognizes it, then one is able to put and use it in its proper way. One is able to use the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its proper way. And, 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 and also, one is able then to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even further. One is able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even further. And that thankfulness, the thankfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes about uh, as a result of this, as a result of this, that thankfulness is not thankfulness of an in, uh, is is not thankfulness that one has increase in one's thankfulness. No, it's that the is that the quality of the thankfulness becomes more uh, uh, it becomes more deeper. It's more sincere. The thankfulness that one has when one thanks Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it becomes more sincere. There's more sincerity in the thankfulness. And so, the, uh, and so it comes about that preparedness, the, uh, the coming of, <clears throat> of the divine help is in the measure, as he says, of, uh, of the preparedness of the person. Uh, one has to uh, prepare, uh, one has to prepare and one prepares by the perfection of the outward worship and coupled with the sincerity of the intention, sincerity of knowing why you do what you do, knowing the reason behind it and understanding and grasping the reason behind it. And so, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his help at all moments to the servant in various ways. It's just the servant has to understand the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending his help and then to take advantage, full advantage of that help that is coming and putting that help and taking that help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using it towards becoming even closer 
in terms of uh, in terms of one's love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one's longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the servant does that, then the divine help is, is channeled and it comes and it brings about fruition and it brings about the fruits that he talks about. And then you will find those fruits in the next world and you will be enter and we, the person will enter into the garden and to, in order to be with his Lord. This is what uh, uh, happens. And so knowledge is important. The seeking of knowledge of what to do and when to do it and the best times to do it, along with making one's intention sincere, is the foremost in, prepare, in preparing oneself to receive and to understand what to do with the divine help that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and forgive us and have mercy upon us, forgive our elders and our parents, give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our children, keep them on the straight path, give them success in this world, and grant them success in the next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect uh, the ummah of the Messenger وسلم, from difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, those who are faced with any form of, of challenges or difficulties, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate ease uh, with them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove their difficulties, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them and close them, secure them, bring security to their homes and to their communities, to their societies, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them and guide us, help us and guide us, give us knowledge that is of benefit and help us to benefit through the knowledge that he uh, provides and gives to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and cure them. Those who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them his mercy and his maqfirah and his shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words and deeds our very best. Subhanahu wa hamdik la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأعتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org/donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.